this week the incredible story of one of the country's most famous newspapers through the eyes of a former editor. Also the press photos that captured imaginations around the world in 2018. Our ad of the week pays respect to those celebrating the holy month of Ramadan, an in-depth look at the rise of rum and the increasingly sophisticated South African drinker. And we'll also find out more about a new digital playground revealing the space where technology and the arts are finally converging. When drum magazine owner Jim Bailey launched City Press newspaper in 1982, the name harked back to the days of the famous Golden City Post of Sapphire Town Township jazz and legendary journalists such as Lewis and Corsi and Bloch Modisani. In 1984, a buyout by the media giant Nuspers raised some eyebrows, but in fact, as you're about to hear, opened a new chapter in journalistic excellence, building bridges between Africana and black nationalism in the dying days of apartheid. Now, in a newly released book, it's called The Chapter We Wrote, The City Press Story. Former editor of the paper, Len Kalani, looks back on the history of City Press, and I am delighted to welcome him to the program. Len, what an absolute joy it has been reading this book, and congratulations to you. I want to start with one person who I think is the life force behind this book. You know who I'm talking about, uh, Percy Koboza. Maybe explain his contribution and why he was called the Black Dog. We had an era of the Black Press. Actually, that that is the the, the 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 time you know, maybe late in the 18th centuries to to the early 19th centuries, and up to the time when you had the world, which was called the Bantu world, which was started, I think that was 1933, mm. and it went on. You had its first editor, Selopetema, and then you had Dr. Nklapo. And it stayed for some time, right up to 1962, without an editor. And then the editor that got in after those two was M.T. Moerani. In 1974, Percy took over the editorship of, of, of then the world, which was the Bantu world before. Percy came to change the face of black journalism, as it were. The first era was black writers. And then I think the second era was black journalism. Then Jim Bailey does come into the picture somehow, because then Jim Bailey launched Drum Magazine in 1950. And, and that's when actually journalism as we know it today actually changed a little bit slightly. In, in what respect did it change? Well, it, was, it, it was a new approach, <clears throat> it was a new writing style, it was different type of stories that you were interrogating, stories that hitherto had not been told. They took the, the English model of journalism mm -hmm. and they brought it to South Africa very exciting. He discovered new writers, uh, you know, who lived the way they lived. We know all about that. But then um, it's also a kind of journalism that, that highlighted or exposed the abuses of apartheid. Mm -hmm. Now, the difference between Jim and Percy is that Jim, Jim, Jim's platforms actually did exactly that. They highlighted and exposed the, yes. the injustice of apartheid. But then Percy had an agenda. He shaped a certain agenda among black journalists, and he brought some respectability. What there. was he like to work with and to work for? Well, he was quite unpredictable, uh, uh, very colorful, exuberant. You ask me, I never really know when Percy went to bed, mm. number one. I actually, I can't tell you when, when he even read, mm. but it, he was well read up. He would, he would know mm. stuff, he, would, he was an early riser. Uh, uh, and, and, and a heavy drinker. Well, I was going to say, you make the point in the book that uh, he, he was fueled by gin and tonic. That's right. Yeah. And I once asked him, why? And then, you know, he menacingly pointed up to the, to the heavens and said, uh, I'm not too sure if I should say mm. this on, on, on television, <laughs> but he said, mm. I nearly saw my mother. Well, you, you, you succeeded him uh, and a, a raft of very famous editors uh, who have been in charge of the title for so many years. What makes a great... Sunday newspaper editor, do you think? There's no formula how to edit a newspaper, really. It, it's all, uh, it's an individual thing. Mm. You know, you, 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 you put your mark onto it. Percy has done that. 
uh, quite successfully. We came, uh, and, and particularly I, was a news editor of City Press for, for a very, very, very well, long don't time. Light your, yeah. hide your light under a bushel. The longest serving news editor, I think, to date of the title. Yes, yeah. that's absolutely right. Yeah. And at the time when I was, I was the news editor, of course, I, 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 I had amazing power. I think Percy uh, uh, molded me to the person, that, the kind of person that I am. Let's come back to your tenure as editor, Len Kalani. Why did they call you Josie Josie? Uh, you know about that. OK. After the political dispensation yeah. of 1994, and when the exiles came back and when when every you know when the ANC took over and 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 we were getting into this new era we realized that the the, the city the Johannesburg CBD was sort of like degenerating mm. we were alarmed by, by the deterioration of what the city used to be like and how it's the face is changing overnight and then we said we need to nip this in the bud mm. we need to to, to help stop this. And then we initiated uh, this uh, Josie Josie thing, which is Joe Beck, Joe Beck, mm. to say that the city in ruins and then save the city, please. And then the, the intention then was to, to engage the, the new uh, the administrators to say that, listen, this is happening. Let's, let's stop this from, from happening. We do you, don't do you think we do enough of this type of crusading journalism these days? No, well, we don't. We do a lot of Zuma, you know, we, we do a lot of uh, uh, the kind of corruption. But then what we do we, is to report on it. Uh, we don't crusade against mm. it. We don't. Just a final question, Len Kalani, and yeah. we, we can only scratch the surface of this astonishing book, and it really is reflective of a very important part in South African news history. Um, you were always very critical of younger journalists because they didn't read enough. Yes. Flesh that out for me. Well, there's a lot of mm. uh, 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 social media stuff. There's a lot of uh, Googling. You know, there's a lot of its uh, shortcuts, mm. as, as it were. And, and I think that's the way we are, because they can find the answers. And more poorer the craft of journalism is as a result Absol of not going in depth. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I had been to City Press and uh, I was shocked to find out that uh, some of the staff members had hardly been to the City Press library. Mm -hmm. They haven't been, they don't know where the library is in the building. And I was say, how? Oh, we, we lived in the library. Mm. So how do you guess mm. get to put the news and, uh, out there without, you know, making adequate reference? And in I, terms think, of I think that is the library? such sage advice uh, for young journalists. Uh, Len Kalani, I, I cannot recommend this book enough. It's called uh, The Chapter We Wrote, The City Press Story, uh, former editor Len Kalani. It is one of the best books on media I have read for a long time. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope that uh, the sales go through the roof. Really appreciate your time. Now, while we're celebrating great journalism, uh, Venezuelan photographer Ronaldo Schmidt's pho photograph of a man on fire during violent clashes with riot police during protests in his home country, winning the 2018 World Press Photo of the Year Award. Conservationist photographer Neil Aldrich winning in the environmental category with this poignant photograph of a young white rhino drugged and blindfolded and about to be released into the Okavango Delta in Botswana after being relocated from South Africa in order to protect him from poachers. Just over 4,500 photographers submitting more than 73,000 images to the competition this year. And when we continue, a big brand receives an overwhelmingly positive response to its Ramadan ad and an exciting new digital arts festival creating a playground for adventurous artists and curious audiences.